Okay, so if you like solving challenging math problems, well then this is the perfect little video for you. And the question here is, we wanna find the length of x. Okay, so what is x? Well, x is this little part of the figure right there. So let me go ahead and explain to you uh, what you are looking at. We have a complicated looking uh, uh, figure here. So obviously we have a circle, okay? But embedded in the circle is a large rectangle and the corners of that rectangle are hitting the edge of the circle. Now you can see we have the diameter of the circle as well, kind of chopping through here. So this is the diameter and this is also the diameter. And it's uh, the diameters are basically taking this large rectangle and chopping it up into uh, four little rectangles that are the same. Okay. Now, when we look at this, uh, we we'll look at these little rectangles right here. The diagonal this way is 12.5. Same thing on this side. The diagonal of this little rectangle is 12.5. And this distance from the edge of the circle to the uh, edge of the large rectangle is 5.45, same distance on this side as well. Okay, so you're gonna need uh, all this information in order to solve for this distance right there, x. And most people are gonna have a tough time, a tough time solving this problem uh, because they are going to give up too early, okay? Most people will have the math skills, I believe, uh, to figure this out, or hopefully they have the math skills, but even if they do have the math skills, they're still going to have a tough time figuring this out, or at least a lot of people are. Uh, and those of you that are looking at this, you're like, I have no idea what to do. Please don't give up too soon. Stick with this problem because eventually I think you will be able to see the solution. For some of you, it's going to be obvious what to do. Others of you, uh, you know, it's not going to be so obvious and it's going to be difficult. But if you stick with it, I think you will see exactly how to solve for X. This is, again, uh, going to be a very interesting and challenging problem. Uh, feel free to use a calculator, but if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I think we kind of, well, at least hopefully I think you understand the prom. Again, a lot of information going on here, so don't rush through this. Uh, again, we're looking for this little uh, segment right there. What's the distance from the edge of the circle to the top of the rectangle right along the diameter? That is what we're looking for. X, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is it's approximately 2.2. All right, now, if you got this right, that is, well, boy, that is so impressive. I'm going to have to give you ha a happy face, an A++++, a 1,000%. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would say you are dismissed, and I'm going to jump you uh, two levels ahead to your next math class. So if you're in algebra, uh, when you return uh, back to school, you'll be in calculus. But anyways, all jokes aside, if you figured this out, that was very, very good. And how you figured it out, well, you know, that's really up to you because there could be different approaches. Well, not could be. There certainly are different approaches to figuring this out. But there's only kind of one main strategy um, that we need to take uh, in order to answer the question. So let's go ahead and get into the problem right now. And again, uh, it is confusing because we have a lot of information. Well, it could be confusing for most people out there because there's a lot to kind of take in. So we're looking for X, right? We're looking for this part right here. So let's just um, think about it for a second. How can we find this value or this length? Okay, for right there. Now, I'm not saying, um, you know, basically, I'm not asking you how to get the information uh, needed to find this length, but how can we get this length? Okay, just let's just talk in general terms here for a second. So for those of you that didn't figure this out, you know, that's the question. Okay, for now. All right, well, if we're looking for this length, how can we determine this length? Well, this length is along the diameter of the circle. So this is the center of the circle. So this... Uh, this uh, line right here is the diameter. It's running through the center of the circle. So to get to this length right there, well, we're going to need to subtract what? Well, we're gonna have to take this distance right here. We'll have to figure this out. And um, 
we could either take this uh, distance and then, well, maybe we just don't know this distance right here, right? We're like, well, that does us no good if we don't have this. This is one part of, of figuring this out. But again, you know, I'm trying to, um, you know, not be so uh, <laughs> clear here for obvious reasons. I want you to think about this. How can we solve for X, okay, before we even start? So some of you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just hurry up and tell me how we could solve for X. Okay, I uh, heard you. I will tell you how we can get this distance. The only way to get this distance is to get this big distance right here, okay, which is the what? That is the radius of the circle. So we got to go from here to the edge of the circle. That's the radius. And if we have that information and we subtract it away from this distance, which is the center of the circle, out to the edge of this uh, rectangle right here, this distance. If we take the radius and we subtract from this distance right here, we'll end up with this uh, little distance right there, x. Okay, so that is what we need to do. So if you saw that uh, strategy, well, then you saw the right strategy, uh, strategy. And now it's really up to figuring out how to get this information, right? So if we can get the radius, if we can get this distance, then we can solve for x. Okay, so. If you saw that, you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, that is my plan. Okay, well, now that you have a plan, we need to, we need to actually go get this information. So first things first, we have to get the radius. What's the radius of this circle? All right, well, it would be great to know that, but uh, how can we get that? Because we only have the diagonals right here. Well, let's go ahead and talk about how to find the radius of the circle because once you um, uh, determine what the radius is, this um, um, you know problem is going to be very achievable in terms of figuring it out for most people. Okay, I think the the key uh, thing here um, is twofold in terms of what gives people a tough um, time with this problem. One is just the general strategy of what we're trying to do, and the second thing is how do we solve for the radius? How do we get the radius here, right? And the radius is what distance? Well, it's from here out to here or here, how to here. We have like this diagonal and this little piece. How can we get the radius? When I show you this, you're gonna be shocked. This is so, so easy. So if you didn't see how to solve <laughs> for the radius, I'm gonna show you it right now. Okay, so this is how you find the radius. We didn't even have to do any math. So the radius is what? Well, if you take a look at the, this rectangle, one of our four little uh, rectangles, we have the big rectangle, okay? And then here, uh, we have these small rectangles. Now, let's notice here we have right angles. This is what a rectangle is. And down here, uh, we're being told that these are congruent. So rectangle, the opposite sides are congruent. You need to know a little bit about rectangles. And uh, when it comes to a rectangle or a square, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, the diagonals, okay, a, by the way, I said square, all right, and a rectangle is... A, uh, a square is a type of rectangle, type of quadrilateral, but basically the opposite sides are congruent, congruent, meaning that they are the same distance and the corners are 90 degrees. But the main property that you need to know about either a square or a rectangle is that the diagonals are congruent. In other words, they are the same measure. So right here, we're dealing with a rectangle, this little small rectangle. This is 90 degrees, so this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees right here. So whatever distance this is right here, it's the same distance in, in terms of the diagonal, right? We, we, we know the diagonal from here to here is 12.5. So that means the diagonal from here to here is also 12.5. And when you look at that diagonal, what is this distance? Well, we're going from the center out to the edge of the circle. This, in fact, is the radius, okay? So this right here, I think, is um, the key to unlocking the problem is to identify that um, this uh, diagonal is, in fact, the actual uh, radius of the circle because uh, once you have the radius, this problem is pretty straightforward. Okay, so the radius is 12.5. So that means if we kind of swung this little red line around this way, we have this distance right here from here down to the uh, to the center of the circle is 12.5. Okay, so now that we have that distance, all we have to do is figure out what this distance is right here, which is the top of the rectangle to the center or the uh, the height of one of these small rectangles, and then we can figure out what x is equal to. So let's go ahead and take that next step now. And um, 
Actually, before we do that, we're going to need one other piece of information. So I was a little uh, premature there and taking that next step. Okay, so uh, let me back up here. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'm just so excited to explain this part because this is the fun part of the problem. Okay, so we know that we know what now? Well, we know that the radius is uh, 12.5. Now we're given this 5.45. Uh, so if we swing the radius, I um, already told you that, yes, we can swing the radius over here, but we can also swing the radius down this way. So for the center of the circle out to the edge is 12.5 right here. And we know that this green distance from the edge of the rectangle out to the center of the circle is 5.45. So we can get this distance right here, okay? So if this is 5.45 and the radius is 12.5, I can get the bottom of this little rectangle right here, or not, or triangle rather, excuse me. So let's take a look. I have this um, original blue diagonal that goes uh, right here, and this is forming a right triangle. I can get this length right there, okay, by subtracting the radius from this 5.45, okay? So in other words, I know the radius now is, is 12.5, and if I subtract away this uh, distance here, which is 5.45, I'll get this distance right here. And if I get this distance, I can therefore uh, use this diagonal and that distance to get this distance, okay? I can use that, uh, use the Pythagorean theorem to get this length right here, and then I'll have everything I need to solve this problem. Okay, so sorry if I confused you in terms of uh, the strategy, but let's go ahead and actually get this distance, which is pretty straightforward. So it's just gonna be 12.5 minus 5.45. So uh, 12.5 minus uh, 5.45 is 7.05. That's the distance of the bottom of this little uh, triangle right there. Okay, so a lot going on, but uh, we are almost there. So let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy content like this, you know, um, then that makes me happy, right? That's the whole point of me making this video is to make math interesting and fun. But uh, really, you know, I want you to learn the underlying concepts. And uh, if you're having a difficult time with math, please do not give up, okay? The number one reason people have a tough time with math is because they think they're bad at math, okay? Most people are like, I'm bad at math. They just have this conclusion, I'm not good at math. Well, you know, maybe it's because you're, um, you know, you're, you are looking at things the wrong way. OK, and if you ever, ever um, get a teacher or somebody telling you uh, that you are bad at math, you need to find another teacher immediately. OK, but you yourself should never uh, say, you know what, I'm just not smart enough to learn this stuff. You know, uh, you know, now whether you like math, that's a whole different uh, topic. But if you have to learn math, you could definitely learn it. So just some uh, quick uh, tips here. OK. One, there are no shortcuts. It takes a lot of work to learn math. It's a lot of skills. So if you're looking for shortcuts, you're just going to get frustrated and you're going to have a tough time, you know, uh, learning mathematics, right? So, you know, don't confuse the two, you know, uh, in terms of you being mad at math or you, you know, not putting in the work, right? There are no shortcuts. So be willing to put in the work. But, um, you know, it's kind of like um, basically climbing a staircase, right? So whatever skill level you're at, if you're right here, well, it's going to take work because you just can't go from here to here, right? I wish it was that way, but you're going to have to learn math by a series of a lot of little skills and cumulatively, okay, you will get to whatever point you need to get to uh, with your math goals. But beyond that, you need great math instruction. Uh, crystal clear and comprehensive, and that's what I love to do. I like to let a real, I like to really try to break uh, the concepts down. So if you don't have a math teacher, or if you're in a particular math course and you need uh, instructional support, check out all my main math courses. I'll leave I'll leave links to them in the description. But get the help that you need, and please don't give up. Thanks for listening uh, for my little pitch here. But uh, this is really my passion. This is why I have this YouTube channel. So I need your support to uh, reach as many people as possible, just hit that subscribe button, so easy. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's get back to this problem. And um, you know, I was kind of um, all over the place here because you know there is a lot of pieces of information that we need to kind of uh, get here to solve the problem, right? So the first thing we figured out is that the radius is actually this distance right here, okay? So 12.5 is in fact the radius of this circle. So we have this distance now that it is 12.5.
And because the radius is 12.5, uh, the radius comes out this way, we know that this is 5.45 right here. So we took the radius, uh, 12.5, and we uh, subtracted away 5.45, and that leaves us at a 7.05 right here. Okay, this distance right here, which is the bottom of this little right uh, uh, triangle right here. Okay, so we can get this right triangle right here. We can get this length by using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, because we have the hypotenuse from here to here, that's 12.5. We have the bottom, which is 7.05. So we can get this length right there by using the Pythagorean theorem. And if you're not familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, that is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. And here it is. We kind of just broke off this little piece right here of that uh, small rectangle. So our um, hypotenuse is 12.5. Uh, the bottom is 7.05. This length here is x. This is what we're looking for. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. c squared, or c, is the hypotenuse. So we kind of build it out this way. So x squared plus 7.05 squared. That could be our b is equal to c squared. If you're not familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel, or you could just check out any one of my geometry um, courses that I teach geometry in, which would include pre-algebra, algebra one, and my full geometry course. So uh, again, if you don't understand this part of the problem, uh, you can get help uh, by checking out those courses. But what we're gonna do here is solve for x. So x squared plus uh, 7.05 squared is 49.7025 roughly. And then we have 12.5 squared, which would be about 156.25. And when we solve for x here, uh, we're going to go ahead and just clean this up. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. You can see the math. So x is approximately 10.322. Okay, so now what does that mean? Well, if x is... Uh, uh, the x what that we uh, just found is this distance right here. That now is 10.322. Okay, that is the result of using the Pythagorean theorem. We know the radius. The radius is 12.5. We have this distance. So remember, to solve for x, all we have to do is take the difference of those two numbers. So 12.5, which is the radius, minus the uh, length of that right triangle, which is 10 uh, uh, point. Uh, or the height of that right uh, triangle that we just found is 10.322. We take the difference and we're going to get approximately 2.178. So we'll round that up to 2.2. So again, that little value that we were searching for, this X right here, is approximately 2.2. Okay, so hopefully you found this problem interesting and challenging. And again, if you didn't get this right, you know, I'm pretty sure you could have uh, figured this out. It just takes time. I think the main lesson here uh, is the following. When you see a problem, then it's not, you know, obvious what to do. Stick with it. Don't give up, okay? Because sometimes, you know, it takes time for you to actually see, you know, something in the problem that will unlock the key to finding the solution. All right, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this problem. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.